Would you feel safe spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on a property you'd never seen in real life? It used to terrify me. So my first buys were as close to home as I could possibly afford. But over time, my confidence grew and I've ended up spending over a million pounds on properties I've never even visited. Not only have the investments been profitable, it saved me a ton of time. But in order to do this safely, you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise things can go very badly wrong. So today I'm gonna to talk you through my exact process for buying properties from afar so that you can find the best property deals possible, not just in your local area, but all across the country. And at the end, I'll give you my step-by-step -step checklist to make sure you're doing everything in a way that keeps you safe and maximizes your returns. But before we get into any of that, why would you want to invest in a property without actually seeing it? Well, in order to explain this, I'm gonna tell you a story about Ingrid the investor and Lee the landlord. Lee the landlord just loves getting hands-on with his properties. He handles every aspect of the process himself, going out and viewing countless properties before finding the right one for him, lovingly preparing it for his tenants to move in, referencing carefully to make sure the new occupants are worthy of the lovely home he's created and are going to take care of it. And then always being on hand to deal with repairs, maintenance, upgrades, and any other bumps in the road. Of course, because he's so involved in every aspect of his investments, Lee can only invest close to home and he happens to live in Middlesbrough. Unfortunately, Middlesbrough hasn't seen much property price growth compared to the rest of the country, but there's not much Lee can do about that. And in any case, since he made his investments back in 2018, they've gone up in value by the average amount for Middlesbrough, which is 24%. Plus, of course, he's been collecting the rent, so it's certainly not been a bad outcome. Lee's portfolio plus his job do keep him busy, but he enjoys the extra income and is glad he made the jump into property. But at the same time, back in 2018, there was another investor making moves in the property market, and her name is Ingrid. Ingrid lives in London, and she knew that London was not set to be the strongest place to invest. And indeed, since 2018, average property prices in London are up by just 6.5% which is far below the national average and below even the rate of inflation. So it's just as well that Ingrid was comfortable with making investments away from where she lived, probably because she subscribes to our YouTube channel, always leaves supportive comments, and is in no way made up for the sake of this example, she made investments in Manchester and Nottingham, which since 2018 just happened to be two of the strongest performers in the country in terms of capital growth. Compared to the 24% growth in Middlesbrough, her investments in Nottingham have increased in value by 38% and in Manchester by 42%. So there are two clear advantages to Ingrid's approach, plus a third that isn't so obvious at first. First, she's not limited to her local market, which means she's able to invest in areas that are primed to perform better. Don't get me wrong, if there were no other factors, local is better because you understand the area more and it makes everything that little bit easier. But there are always other factors. And if Ingrid had restricted herself to London, she wouldn't have done anywhere near so well. She's also able to achieve some diversification. Of course, investing in multiple locations involves multiple sets of research and needing to find the right contacts many times over. So she wouldn't necessarily want to make every investment in a different city. But by picking two areas she liked and spreading her bets, she would have been well covered, even if one of them hadn't played out as she expected. But there is a third advantage to her approach, which I personally found to be the most profitable. Of course, there was still plenty of research to do, and the process of buying a property is always somewhat painful. But by not spending her time calling agents, going out to viewings, or doing anything at the property itself, she was able to keep her evenings and weekends free and not constantly get distracted with issues and decisions. As a result, Ingrid was able to have more time and freedom to herself she was able to focus on running her consultancy business, which generates the capital for her to invest in property in the first place. As a result, it went from strength to strength, generating more cash, which allowed her to invest in more properties, boosting her portfolio even further. Of course, although it worked out well for Ingrid, there are some serious risks with taking this approach. Firstly, there's a much higher risk of her making a bad investment in the first place through a lack of local knowledge. I've been assuming that her returns equal the average of each of the cities that she invested in, but she could easily have strayed into a below average area through a lack of local knowledge and made an investment that not only underperformed in terms of capital value, but could have proven difficult to rent or produced a lower rental return than she expected. 
Second is a lack of control. If something needed doing at one of Ingrid's properties, she wouldn't be able to deal with it, meaning she needs to be able to completely trust whoever is doing it to make sure her tenants are happy and her property is protected. And finally, the bittersweet advantage of investing from afar is she can invest anywhere. And too much choice is not necessarily a good thing. I've seen plenty of investors fall prey to analysis paralysis, spending months or even years learning all about the wonderful places that they could invest, but never being able to narrow it down far enough to actually pull the trigger. So how can we mitigate these risks and get all the benefits of investing in booming areas without the potential complications of not being down the road? If you're going to a new city for a long weekend and you want to make dinner reservations before you go, it's not that hard. Look at some reviews, look through their website, job done. But if you're getting married abroad, it's a whole different matter. You probably need to get a specialist wedding planner involved. Take multiple trips over there to make sure everything is as you want it. And even then, there's a far higher probability of something going wrong and ruining your big day compared to if you used the church down the road. And it's the same when it comes to the type of property you're looking to invest in. Distance adds complication, so you want to make it more like a meal than matrimonials. Simply put, if you're engaging in a refurb project or even trying to flip a property to get a quick gain, it is possible to do it from hundreds of miles away. I know people who've made it work, but there is a lot more that can go wrong and it's a lot more stressful. If on the other hand, you're just buying a standard buy to let property that's ready to go and you'll be holding it for the long term, then there's far less that can go wrong. There are fewer moving parts. You still need to do plenty of research, but on the whole, the investment is much easier to pull off and there's much less risk. One of the benefits of investing from afar is you can buy in an area that's predicted to boom. But how do you do that? And how do you do it without falling victim to the dreaded analysis paralysis? Well, to find promising areas, you could watch our other videos on the subject, where we share the methods that we've used to consistently pick winners for a decade for both ourselves and our clients. But given that you can invest anywhere, it might be worth imposing some constraints on yourself to narrow the field, even if those constraints are artificial ones. For example, you might pick somewhere you can get to in a couple of hours by train, not because you're necessarily planning to, but because it narrows down your choices. Or you could pick an area where you have friends or family living, which potentially gives you a local ally or someone to share information with you. And if nothing else, it cuts down your options in a good way. But picking an area is just the start. You're never gonna know that area as well as you do your own backyard, which is why this next step is so important. Imagine you've picked a destination for a family holiday. Well, before you leave, you'll want to pick a hotel and choose some activities to enjoy while you're there. And to do that, you'll use all the resources you have at hand to build up your understanding of where you'll be going before you get on the plane. That could be forums, websites, friends who visited there before, and more. And exactly the same is true for investing remotely. You're effectively giving yourself a crash course in a new location getting as close as you can to knowing it as well as you do your immediate surroundings. You won't get quite to that point because you need to build that knowledge much more quickly rather than doing it organically over many years, but you can get surprisingly close surprisingly fast. The first phase is online research, and I'll link in the description below to the full process that I use to get to grips with a new area along with all the tools I use. But just as a quick spoiler, Google Street View is the one tool that I would not want to be without but that will only get you so far. So at that point, you'll want to get on the phone and start speaking to people who operate locally. Estate agents are the obvious place to start. Other investors are great if you can make contact with any. And letting agents are an underused resource because they get to see how different properties perform well beyond the point that they're sold. Again, the resource in the description goes into all that in more detail. But even if you have all of that sorted, you're going to seriously struggle if you don't get this final step in place. Of course, there's nothing to stop you from choosing an area within a few hours of where you live, then traveling there for viewings, batching them up as best you can, and going through exactly the same process as you would do if you were buying locally, just with some extra travel time. I know many people who've done this successfully, but what's really saved me tons of time is buying properties that I've never set eyes on. So the way that I do that without taking on an insane amount of risk is by building relationships 
with local partners who I can trust to surface opportunities for me. I've bought through at least four sets of local partners that I can think of, all in different cities. On one occasion, it was a letting agent who was showing me properties that he'd come across and was willing to share with me on the basis that he'd get to manage them once I'd bought. On another, it was through an individual who was an investor himself locally and had a sideline in pointing out of town investors towards suitable properties for a small fee. And now I co-own a property sourcing company that does this professionally for hundreds of investors all over the country. So of course, I make all my investments through there. But the common factor is that I have never visited any of these properties myself. What I do to have confidence in this seemingly mad course of action is a three-step process. First, I research the company or the individual. This is the most important step of all because I need to know that the person bringing me the opportunities can be trusted. If through doing my own digging and speaking to others, I'm convinced that they're trustworthy, that's a very strong start. But it's not all. The second step is to research their research. When they're claiming how much a property is worth, how in demand it'll be for rental, the cost of work that needs doing, or anything like that, I'll always run an analysis of my own to see if I agree. Because it's possible that they're presenting it in the best possible light, or it's possible that they've just missed something. Normally, on the basis of that research, plus photos and videos that they've shown me of the property itself, that's good enough for me to go ahead. But a third step that I have used on occasion is to send a third, completely independent person along to look at the property themselves. I give them a checklist to work from and get them to take their own photos to make sure that the ones I'd seen before weren't taken from artful angles that hide all the problems. Beyond that, of course, there's the normal conveyancing process where my solicitor goes through everything to make sure it's all as it should be and catch anything that I might have missed. But that would be the same if I was buying locally. And in all this time of buying properties without visiting them, have they all been absolutely fantastic slam dunk performers? No, but they wouldn't be if I'd gone to see them myself either. But have I had a bad experience? Again, it's a no. What's more, it's allowed me to build a portfolio that's diversified across different areas that have experienced very strong growth. And most importantly, it's allowed me to actually invest at all during a period when I've been extremely busy running a business and having a young family. If I'd been trying to do everything myself, I probably would have been forced to put property on the back burner for years on end and miss out on all the growth and rental income that I've benefited from. Be warned though, if you're going to go down this route, your research skills need to be strong. You can't rely on local knowledge to make gut feel decisions. You'll need to be comfortable learning about new areas from scratch and deep diving into sales comparables, rent levels, and trends. But this doesn't have to be as daunting as it sounds, especially if you have the right tools to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So watch this video next, where I take you through the property research tools that I wouldn't make an investment without using. And luckily enough, they're all free.